Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ready to Scale. I'm your host, Ellie Perlman, broadcasting from Boston, Massachusetts. And today, I want to talk to you about how the current economy is affecting real estate deal flow. This is a question we get a lot from our, our investors. When is the next deal coming? What do you see in terms of deal flow? And, you know, share with us what you see. And here it is. So we all know that right now um, the interest rates, you know, are going up and um, also rents are going up across the country. And I want to talk today, kind of focus on the deal flow side, what's happening with acquisitions. And so in terms of the deal flow specifically, you know, today I'm recording it September 19th, 2022, there has been a slowdown and we felt that um, I would say a few months ago, since the uh, since the feds, um, since they've declared their intention of of uh, increasing rates, and so a lot of buyer, a lot of sellers um, are actually, you know, they pulled their deal out of the market or they're hesitant in putting the deal in the market because they run a very quick calculation and they say, you know, if I put the deal in the market six months ago three months ago, a year ago, I could have gotten millions of dollars more. And it's very painful right now for some of them to still put the deal in the market um, and get less than what they could have gotten, you know, a few months ago. Now, some sellers don't have much choice because either their loan is due or the partnership is falling apart, or they just want to move away from a certain market or a certain um, asset class. And so there's still deals out there, but it's definitely it's definitely going down a bit. Um, and in the market in general, there's some cyclicality there throughout the year. So around the end of October, November, and December, um, January, and a little bit of February, these are the winter months and a lot of sellers don't really put their deals in the market. They don't want to sell during the winter time. Um, and so it kind of, this is a slowdown, um, not because technically not, not because it's winter and cold, but because it's the holiday uh, season. So I would say start in November and December is the holiday season, January, everyone is coming back from traveling, you know, um, towards the end of the year. And so a lot of deals are kind of waiting um, and during uh, the second part of February, this is where we see deals, you know, picking, being the deal flow um, uh, kind of increasing and we see more and more deals. But right now there's a bit of a slowdown in deal flow. Now, in terms of pricing, generally speaking, the pricing of multifamily has been stabilized, but um, occasionally we would see some deals that the prices are actually going down a bit. And that's because right now in the economy, because the interest rates are increasing, there's still inflation going on. Um, and so cap rates have increased. And so when cap rates increase, then, you know, real estate prices go down. Now, the I, I think there that there was some expectations that as um, cap rates increase, all prices should go down, but instead, a lot of buyers have adjusted their expectations in terms of what the yields that they're expecting to see from deals. And that's why even with um, a cap rate that is higher by 50, 75 basis points, there's still, some groups are still making the same offers in terms of, you know, they're still making high offers, very competitive, aggressive offers, because instead of getting, let's say, 7% cash on cash or 6%, they're okay with three or four. And I'm going to talk about adjusting expectations um, in a bit. And so in terms of pricing, for the most part, it's stable. And again, it kind of, um, it's related to the deal flow because there's a slowdown. And especially now, you know, um, late September, a lot of groups kind of they sense the end of the year, they know they need to deploy capital and they're willing to pay a premium in order to do that because they need to do it this year. And there's also, you know, there's not a, as many deals as they were, you know, three years ago. Um, and so two years ago, we're still in, in the first year of COVID. And so there was a slowdown as well. Um, and that's why 
prices haven't gone down as much as you would have expected. Um, I do see more off-market deals. Um, I think some sellers want to test the market out and see whether they can actually sell the deal the price that they want. And if not, then they're just going to quickly pull it out, you know, out of the market and put it back in the market when it's the right time. Uh, so we do see a pickup in the number of off-market deals, which is good. Um, so, you know, what do you do when you when you understand that the economy is now in a state that it's affecting real estate deal flow? Um, you know, prices are kind of stable. There's a slowdown in deal flow. What can you do to get more deals? And that's, you know, I'm sharing as a sponsor of multifamily um, properties. This is what um, I, I want to share with you. So what we do, first and foremost, you know, we rely on brokers to bring us those relationships. So strengthening the broker relationships to make sure that we are getting the, the phone calls when there's a deal that are offered off market. Um, and that the brokers are doing a good job at promoting our brand and putting our group at the head of the stack and basically say, hey, we've um, transitioned with these guys. They're, you know, great buyers. We enjoyed working with them. And even if their offer is not the highest offer, you want to award the deals to them because you're more likely to close and they're good a good group to work with. So we want to make sure that you know, our reputation is intact that our relationships with the brokers um, are um, kind of, you know, are, are very strong, as strong as, as we can have them uh, because brokers are kind of the gatekeepers and they are the ones who are recommending to the buyer, to the seller, which buyer to go with. Ultimately, it's the seller's, you know, decision, but uh, they are very, a very, very important piece of, of this whole, whole uh, process. Um, another way, as I mentioned before, you know, to make sure that you keep getting, you know, your pipeline is still um, intact and um, there are enough deals flowing your way is to look more at off-market deals, um, whether it's through brokers or not. Um, and so, if, you know, you have relationships um, with other um, owners, you can basically uh, make sure that you tap into those relationships to make sure that if there's an off-market deal, that you're one of the five, seven, four groups that they're calling to bid on the deal. Now, with everything that is happening today with interest rates uh, increasing, um, it's it's becoming more interesting to win deals. And there there's some adjustments that needs to be done in order to make sure that the slowdown in deal flow is not going to bring your deal flow to a complete halt. And so um, the one thing I would say, the main thing I would advise anyone to focus on is the tenant base, which is also a function of the location. You really want to buy an asset where the tenant base is strong, is solid, that they're going to keep pain that um, delinquency and bad debt are not going to increase. And so usually... Um, my favorite tenant base is medical and tech. Um, and that's why, you know, we're looking into the research triangle in North Carolina, the Raleigh Durham area. Uh, there's a lot of tech there and, um, there's still, you know, a healthy Delta between their income and, um, the cost of living. So they're, they're, you know, able to pay rents, they're able to pay premiums for nicer apartments and, um, you know, in the environment where the, there's a slowdown in deal flow, you want to make sure that the deal that you are going to choose and be awarded, that the tenant base is as strong as as you can have it. Um, in terms of financing, um, it's interesting because, um, you know, loan to value used to be, I would say, 65 to 75% up to maybe three to five months ago. And now we're talking about 50 to 60% maybe it could be 65%. Um, and it's a very important piece of the puzzle because the lower the amount, the dollar amount that comes from the lender, the higher the dollar amount from equity, which means you have more equity that needs to get um, returns and that it's split in the pie. Um, and that impacts 
returns. And so, a, you know, a key point here is to adjust expectations. Right now, most deals that we see in the market are paying 4 to 5% cash on cash. So that's the impact mainly on the debt side. Also, some assumptions when you underwrite a deal, um, I wouldn't recommend, you know, putting 20% rent increases or even 10 or 7%, even if this is what you get right now on other deals in the market, this can all end tomorrow. And so you always want to plan for the worst and hope for the best. Um, and basically adjusting expectations in the underwriting with the lower loan to value in the financing uh, section, that basically impacts returns. And so as long as you invest with why with eyes wide open and you know okay four to five percent cash on cash is a reasonable expectation to class b class a assets in strong markets then you can still you know find deals that would work for you um and you know in in many many markets and so just to recap uh how the current economy is affecting real estate deal flow there has been a slowdown prices that are stable and we do see more off-market deals um, and the main thing here is to adjust expectations. Returns are not what they were before. Um, and that's partially, um, uh, it's, you know, part of it is because the loan to value is lower and you need more equity to close deals. Um, and, you know, part of it also is the, the, the slowdown in deal flow is still being pretty much felt and, and that's what we're experiencing. And there, there's always or many times groups that are willing to overbid um, and they still keep the prices up. And when prices are up, obviously that impacts returns. Um, and so just understanding, um, you know, the strength of multifamily as an asset class and also the other forces that are pushing against very high, you know, yields, if it's a financing and pricing, um, you know, together, you know, coupled with increasing in expenses because of inflation, then you get a kind of a picture um, that is different than how things were six months ago. Is it still a, a very strong asset class to invest in? Absolutely. Um, is it recession, um, you know, uh, bulletproof? There's no such thing, right? It's not, it's recession, maybe resistance. It's not recession proof. And so, um, it's about it. when you're adjusting your expectations and understanding that returns may not have been as high as they were before, but it's still solid. You know, when you sell the asset in three, four, five, six years, there's going to be a nice kind of bonus check at the end and other tax benefits. It still makes a great uh, investment. Um, but it's just something to think about when you're looking at an investment, understand all the different parts of it. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the returns with the debt structure. Um, and also, you know, as long as you invest in the right market with a very strong tenant base, you should do fine. This is all for today, guys. Be well, be strong, keep pushing forward. I'll see you in the next episode. This show is sponsored by my company, Blue Lake Capital, where we help passive investors grow their wealth through large multifamily investments and funds. To learn more about my company and invest in with me, visit www.bluelake-capital.com.